Hi friends, it's Lisa Hetrick, illustrator for Gina K Designs, and I'm so grateful you could join me today. I have a really fun tutorial to share with you today that's big on watercolor, and we're going to be using a new product from Gina K Designs that is um, really super fun. It's going to create a lot of texture in our card design today. So let's get started with sharing the products that I'll be using today. This is Pastillage. It's a new texture paste from Gina K Designs, and I'm really enjoying it, especially using it with my stencils from Gina K. So it's a really, really fun product. I'm going to talk a lot about it as we move through the card design today. I have three colors here from the Gina K Designs line. I have Turquoise Sea, Tranquil Teal, and my ever favorite yellow, Wild Dandelion. And I'm just kind of holding on to the summer here right now and just love these colors. So we're going to be watercoloring with them today. I've been getting a lot of questions about watercoloring with dye inks, so we're going to cover that today. I'm also using the brand new Obsidian Amalgam ink, and I'm not going to lie, people, I love this ink. I love all of the amalgams, but I'm really loving the Obsidian on the watercolor paper. It is amazing. So I'm gonna walk you through that as well. I'm going to be using two stamp sets today. I'm going to use Your Wings. This is my new set with Gina K Designs. I'm going to be using the whole body of the butterfly and some of the builder elements to create this card. And I'm gonna be using a sentiment from the Wrapped in Love stamp set that's new to Gina K Designs as well. The Funky Flourish stencil to use with the texture paste. And I also have the Picket Fence blender brush, my tidy towel, some water, and a watercolor brush for our watercoloring. I also have some other supplies here. The Gina K Designs Connect Glue. I might be using the Terrific Tape. I'm not sure yet. Um, and I have a water bottle here just so that we can wet down the paper. I'm going to take a moment to talk a little bit about the paper stock that I'm using. I have 100% cotton watercolor paper, and that's because I'm going to be doing watercoloring and also because I'm going to be putting that pastillage on the paper, and I really want to do a lot of things with it. I'm going to be getting it wet and adding a lot of color. So I have a cardstock base from the Heavyweight Cardstock. And here are two of my um, watercolor papers. Everyone knows, if you've watched this channel before, the B Paper Company is what I love using for paper crafting. And I just recently started using this 100% cotton from Arteza. So I feel like with the techniques that I'm doing with the pastillage that I want to use watercolor paper and I want it to be 100% cotton because I'm going to kind of put a lot on this. I'm going to get it really super wet and I'm adding a lot of different kind of inks to it. So I also have a scraper and I have a spatula for the pastillage. And now let's just go ahead and get started and talk a bit about the pastillage. So I have a couple samples here of some things that I've done with it. One of the things I want to note about the pastillage is that it's very versatile. It adds a lot of texture to your card without adding a lot of weight or height to the card. And I really like that because I like um, letting the stamps be the star of the show. So the cool thing about it, about this texture paste, is that you can dye it, paint it, ink it, emboss it. You can do so many different things. And it dries with a matte finish. So it has this feeling um, it has this texture feeling of, um, of like frosting. So here I am right here. I'm just putting a little bit of the pastillage out on my craft mat here, and I'm mixing it up with the tranquil teal. Now you could use your re-anchor to do this and it would probably be a lot easier. Um, but I just went ahead and put the cube down on my mat and just using my spatula with the pastillage, just kind of mixing it together. So it is kind of like mixing up your own frosting or your own recipe for your card. And I'm going to go ahead and um, put this color down on some of the watercolor paper so that you can really see it. But the it's really easy to work with. It's lightweight. Um, it's excellent for stencils, but I have done quite a few experiments where I'm just using the spatula and just applying it 
to the paper, like in a swoosh. And I'm going to show you that right here. So um, after I tidied up my spot here, I'm trying to keep keep it a little bit clean. Okay, so I'm taking that color and I'm just using um, my spatula here and just applying it to the paper. So look at that color so it's mixed with the tranquil teal and just note that the pastillage is white so when you do mix it with a color any dye ink or another color you are going to get a bit of that white coming through in the color you are gonna, you're going to be able to dye the pastillage texture paste but it is going to kind of fade back a shade because it is mixing with the white properties that are in the pastillage. So this is the pastillage mixed with dye ink. And you could use any kind of dye ink reinker. You could even use watercolor, um, like liquid watercolors. And I have experimented with that since I have so many of those. So I'm just taking the excess that I have on my spatula here and just kind of showing you how you can take the dyed ink version and use it in your stencil. And it's going to be really cool if you want to, um, especially if you want to do some color matching. If you're using the inks and you want to do some serious color matching, this is a really great way to use the texture paste with your stencils, create a lot of texture on your card without a lot of weight and height, which I think that's important. So there's a lot of different texture pastes on the market that you could use. This one I'm really, really digging because of the matte finish. It's not super shiny. It's not shiny at all, actually. It's not glossy. It's just a nice matte finish. So it really does help the stamp continue to be the star of the show on the card. But you've got that texture, so you've created all these different layers and dimensions on your card without adding a ton of weight to the card. Okay, so here's a couple other experiments and samples that I've done with the pastillage. So I took the um, the dot stencil from Gina K and just I wet it, added some of the electro pop, which is woohoo, really poppy inks. I'm loving it, and then I rubbed off a little bit of the color from the pastillage to get some really kind of wonky effects, and I really like it. Here is an example of using the Funky Flourish and doing some watercolor first and then some dye inking on top with the brush, with using a blender brush. And we're gonna do that technique today. I'm gonna to walk you through that. I also put some emboss powder, some of the rose gold emboss powder in the, the pastillage so I could see that it, I could emboss it, and you can. So you could add emboss, powder, glitter, all those wonderful little things in there and let them set up in the paste. So it's kind of super cool. Now here is a super fun little experiment I did. So you see those ridges that I got in the pastillage? Well, I took a I took the spatula and I put a bunch of pastillage down onto the paper. And then I took this wonderful diagonal stripes stamp set from Gina K and I stamped into the pastillage. So I just took the stamp stamped right into it and was able to create that texture, like those crevices from the diagonal stripe. And then I took my blender brush and just a little bit of Tranquil Teal and added some color to it. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with creating the base of the card design. So I've got the Funky Flourish stencil here and I'm using a little bit of Pixie Spray to kind of hold it down. I also have some tacky tape here. Um, from Thermoweb that I'm not sure if I'm going to use, but I'm just going to go ahead and just kind of eyeball up how I want the Funky Floors design to look. So I really kind of want this part of the design to come from the upper right. So I'm just noodling around with the stencil to kind of see which parts of the floors that I really want to use for this design. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that down. You can see that it's sticking right to the watercolor paper, but that um, pixie spray is repositionable, so it's not going to stick or pull up any of the fibers from the paper, so I really, really like that. So that's down really well. If you feel like you need um, to use a little bit of tacky tape, you can easily just tack the outside of it and it'll really hold it down. Okay, so here is the pastillage, and I'm just kind of putting my finger in here so that you can see the texture. It's very, it's a lot like a whip, 
Um, it's very, very lightweight, but it's got kind of like this frosting feel to it. It's um, a little bit of a gray white. So, but when it dries, like I said before, it dries matte. So I'm just going to go ahead and get um, use a spatula and just get a good amount of this pastillage on here. Now I find that I end up using my fingers to just kind of get things onto the stencil so that I can move ahead. Um, and I've got this tool from ThermaWeb, a little, uh, like a squeegee tool that I'm going to use to just really go across the pastillage to get all of that paste into the crevices of the stencil. Now you could use anything, the back of an old credit card, you could use just something that's shaped like this, even something right from your kitchen. Um, but I, ha I have this from ThermaWeb and it works really well with the Glitz glitter gels. And I really enjoy using this because unlike a spatula, you can really um, get this, it's flexible. You can really make good use of all of the product and put some of the product back in to use later. So it's kind of a fun little tool, a little um, easy thing to use that's really super flexible and it cleans up really well. So I'm going to go ahead and just tidy that up and then I'm going to pull the stencil off so that we can reveal underneath. So I'm just showing you here, it's a little bit more difficult to use the spatula to kind of get a smooth blend. So that's why I use the other tool. Okay, so I've pulled up the funky flourish and I'm really digging this. I just love it. Now, the color, like I said, is like a gray white. So you could easily just use the pastillage exactly the way it is in the color that it is. And you could get that kind of tone on tone feel. You could use the pastillage on a colored cardstock, one of the heavyweight cardstocks in the Gina K line. And you would get that nice contrast between the white and the color. But we're gonna play around with dyeing it and doing some fun watercolor techniques today. So I'm showing you here that um, the texture that you can create on the card, I got a little bit on my finger. It's just kind of how it is with me. I end up with everything all over me. But look at the dimension. So we've got this amazing texture without a lot of weight. Now you can set it aside to let it dry or you can just get out your heat tool and go ahead and dry it up. And it takes a couple minutes to do. So it's really not that challenging. Okay, so we're gonna move on. While that's drying, we're gonna move on to the butterfly, stamping the butterfly. And one of the things I wanna mention about the butterfly wings in the stamp set, and the reason why I didn't connect them and make them one whole stamp, is because I wanted you to be able to vary the size of the wingspan in the butterfly. So I'm showing you a couple different things that you can do for positioning the wings down to vary the wing size of the, um, of the butterfly. And it's kind of cool. So you can have a shorter, smaller um, butterfly or you can have a butterfly with a really big wingspan. Okay, I wanna talk a little bit about the new Amalgam Obsidian ink. Now, Usually when I'm using an amalgam, because I'm always using an amalgam when I want to do watercolor or any other kind of medium technique, I use, usually have to put this in the misty and hit it, hit the watercolor paper three times, stamp the watercolor paper three times with the black ink. But with this new obsidian, I only have to stamp it once. So that's really cool. Since I use a lot of watercolor paper, um, in my projects, this is, I'm finding this like super, super valuable. Now I love all of the black inks in the Gina K line, but this new obsidian amalgam allows me to be able to stamp down onto the watercolor paper in one pass, one good strong pass. And I'm using the B watercolor paper today. And you can see that that black that I stamped is solid. So it does a really, really nice job. The obsidian, um, like all of the amalgams, will stain your stamp a little bit, but if you clean it up right away, it's really not a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the obsidian ink with the body of the butterfly and kind of show you, because this is a solid stamp where the other butterfly isn't such, um, the butterfly wings are line art, so they're not super, super solid. 
but I'm going to show you um, what the obsidian looks with a solid stamp and the impression that you can get from it. And it's a really nice, nice black. So solid. And I'm just really impressed with it. And it's just exciting because I really enjoy watercoloring with the amalgams and I'm loving this new obsidian ink. So I just kind of wanted to show you, show it to you up close um, so that you can see. So if you use a lot of different mediums like Copics or watercolor or um, Gamsol with colored pencil, the obsidian might be a great choice for you. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to doing some watercoloring with dye based inks. Now I have a lot of tutorials on my channel that use Gina K dye based inks and distress inks to watercolor, but I've been getting a lot of questions lately about watercolor and using supplies that you already have in your stash. So I wanted to kind of go over some wet in wet watercolor techniques with the dye based inks. So this is going to be a bit of a longer watercolor tutorial than maybe other card tutorials on my channel, but I'm really going to dive into using the dye-based inks as a watercolor medium, and specifically the Gina K dye-based inks. I've sped up the video a little bit so that I can talk you through this and it won't take hours. So with the Gina K dye-based inks, you can add a lot of water to the ink that you've put down on your craft mat, but you do need to work a little quickly because it dries very, very fast. So right now I'm adding a little bit of the wild dandelion from the center of the butterfly out. And I'm just showing you here how I put a little bit of color on the bottom there with the amalgam and how the amalgam is not moving. So the amalgam ink is really fantastic for watercoloring because if you want to color inside the lines and you want that contrast with the amalgam color, um, it, it's a really great medium because that, that line is not going to move. Okay, so I've taken a little bit of Tranquil Teal. I am applying the color on the outside of the wing and just kind of feathering it in towards the center and where the two dye based inks meet we've got the yellow and the tranquil teal we're making green so this is wet on dry I know I said wet on wet before my apologies this is wet on dry so my brush is wet and then I am applying the wet brush with the dye ink to the paper and the paper is dry. So this is a more controlled way of watercoloring. And sometimes this way helps people to feel a little bit more comfortable as you're starting to learn how to use watercolor or use mediums for watercolor techniques. So you can see that I'm just dipping my brush in the water and dipping it into the Tranquil Teal and I'm adding a little bit more layers on the outside of the wings. And again, wet on dry. So my brush is wet and I'm applying it to dry paper and I'm just feathering it in, adding a little bit of water, dabbing off the excess water and then just blending it together. And where the two colors meet, you're creating a third color. So I'm getting that green color that I really wanna try to achieve here. So. The Gina K Designs inks and, and most dye inks that might be in your stash, when you they're transparent, they're not opaque, so they don't have a white pigments in them um, that will create opacity. They're transparent, so when you layer two colors together, you're going to be able to create a third color and do some basic color mixing. And because we have a lot of stamping inks in our stash, it's important to kind of know how to use them if you want to do watercoloring with them. And it's a great way to learn some new techniques with some items that you already have in your stash. So I'm really digging the way this is looking right now, but right now I'm gonna add a little bit more of the Tranquil Teal. And you can see that I'm just got my brush a little bit wet, but not super sopping wet like my last tutorial, and I'll link that up um, here for you. The last tutorial that I shared last week was a wet on wet, so everything was super, super wet. So you can see here that I am just feathering some color in just by using my brush, 
and just um, using this technique where I'm flicking the brush, I'm feathering a little bit of the color in from outside of the wings into the center, and it's creating some lines of texture and a little bit of extra dimension and just a little bit of water with that color. You'll be able to feather out those lines a little bit. You can see I'm just dabbing some water there so that those lines are less harsh and a little bit more organic looking. So you get a lot more texture going. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about these lefty, these new left-handed scissors from Tim Holtz. Super fun. Okay, a little story, true story. I am a left-hander and you see me painting with my left hand and doing all the things with my left hand. But um, I grew up in a time where we really didn't use left-handed scissors. So I learned to adapt and be really good at cutting with my right. But it's basically the only thing that I do with my right. I'm pretty much left side dominant. So these new left-handed scissors, I just had to add them in because they really uh, are a game changer for me. And um, it was, they just feel so comfortable. So yes, I can cut with my left hand and I can cut with my right hand, but these new left-handed scissors make it much more comfortable for any of you that are a lefty. Just, um, it's kind of fun that Tim Holtz has come out with this new product and I really do love his, um, his line of scissors. Okay. So I wanted to show you this texture and the color. So once the dye based inks have dried, look at the water coloring that you can do with the dye based inks and that obsidian. So you get this really amazing contrast. It almost kind of looks like that galaxy watercolor look and feel. So I'm digging this butterfly, loving it. So I went ahead and cut the body of the butterfly out so that I can apply that on top of the butterfly when we are ready to assemble the card. But now we're gonna go ahead and move on to some of the color techniques with the pastillage. So I'm just kind of showing you the pastillage here, dried and on the card. And now we're gonna do the watercolor techniques that I wanna share with you today. So I've got the wild dandelion ink and I've just kind of mashed that down onto my craft mat here. And I've got my brush full of water and I've just applied the water to the watercolor paper and just adding a little bit of the wild dandelion in to get my base color going here, just to get that really nice light yellow color. And you can see that you could stop right here with this technique and just go with it because this, the pastillage has created what I would call like a resist. So it's resisting the color, but it's letting the color just kind of go down into the crevices of the watercolor paper. And it's creating this nice contrast between the yellow and the white of the stencil. So you could stop right here and this would be a really cool technique just alone with the card. So if I put the butterfly on here and I just went with it, we have all of these contrasting colors and it would be a really great card. So the important thing to note with this resist technique is that wet mediums are not going to adhere to the pastillage. So if I added wet watercolor or dye to the base of the watercolor paper, it's going to resist. So that's a really great added benefit of using the pastillage to create resist effects. Okay, so now I'm going in and I'm dyeing the pastillage with the dye based inks. I'm using wild dandelion here and my um, blender brush and just applying some color here. And I'm going to do it in a couple different areas of the flourish. I don't want to cover the whole entire piece because I want to get a little bit of contrast between the white that's resisting the watercolor and then adding a little bit of the dye ink on top and it is adhering to the pastillage. So again, with the pastillage, you can dye it, you can paint it, you can ink it, you can emboss it. Now, while the dye ink is drying, you can rub a little bit of it off and that can create some really fun distress-like techniques that would be super, super fun. Okay, so digging it. I'm just kind of giving this a little quick dry so that you can see how the dye ink can be blended 
on top of the pastillage to change the color. I'm really, really digging it. Okay, so now I'm gonna do a little bit of over stamping on top of the watercolor paper to just create another layer of dimension with this stamped card. So I've got the line art image here that is, um, and I'm just applying a little bit of wild dandelion and adding a little bit of water just to spritz it because we are using watercolor paper. So I really want this to adhere and just kind of move a little bit. And I've got the tranquil teal here and I'm using the leaf image from the stamp set. Just watered it down a little bit and added a little bit of that color at the bottom. We have so much yellow going on at the top half of this card and there's a little bit of tranquil teal going on in the butterfly. So I just wanted to do a little pop of that tranquil teal at the bottom just to kind of draw those two colors together. So I'm using my connect glue on the back of the watercolor paper and I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to the heavyweight, the Gina K Designs heavyweight cardstock that I have cut to an A2 sized card. I really like using this connect glue with watercolor paper because it really just makes, it adheres very, very well and it works just perfectly. Okay, so I'm just taking a little bit of connect glue to the back of the butterfly and I'm only putting a little bit in the center because I'm going to just kind of fold up those wings a little bit. We've got all this illusion of texture and dimension on this card with the pastillage and with the over stamping that just kind of folding up that wing embellishment just creates a little bit of height without a lot of weight. And I've just gone, gone ahead and put a little bit of glue behind the body and just added it on to the butterfly. So all of the elements are added to the card now and we just need to add the sentiment. So I've got this thank you sentiment here that just kind of nests in really well right there in that lower right hand corner. I'm inking it up with the obsidian ink and I'm just going to go ahead and stamp it down on to the watercolor paper. If you're more comfortable, you can uh, pop out your misty and just pop that sentiment in there and you'll be able to line that right up and get it in there. And you can see that I didn't make a good, um, I didn't push down really well on that upper left, but that's okay, I am running with it. It's just going to be great the way it is. Okay, I've got the Uniball Signo white pen and I'm just going to go in and add a few little dots to add a little bit more whimsical feel to this card and just kind of draw your eye in with a little bit more white. There's a lot of yellow and teal and blues and greens that are happening here and that butterfly is really dense and rich in color. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white inside of the wings to kind of create that kind of galaxy feel. You could use some crystals or nouveau drops or your favorite embellishments just to kind of add a little bit extra to the card. I tend to use things that don't add a lot of weight or dimension to the card, especially since the butterfly here is the big embellishment. So take a look at just that little bit of white adds that little extra something there. You could do splatter as well. You've seen me do that technique a lot and I really enjoy doing that technique. But I'm digging the way this looks and look at the pastillage with the being dyed with the wild dandelion and that contrast between the wild dandelion pastillage and the white. And we've got all that texture without a lot of extra dimension. I am loving the way this card turned out. I hope you enjoyed today's card tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. Please consider sharing the joy by liking this video and subscribing to this channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next week.